right, I see that it is 6.30, so we will call this uh, February 6th meeting of the Murray City Planning Commission to order. And uh, my name is Phil Markham. I'll be chairing the meeting this evening. And uh, I'd like to, first of all, welcome you here tonight. And I'll introduce um, our, uh, our illustrious uh, commission. We have Travis Ney, Marin Patterson, Sue Wilson, Scott Woodbury, and Lisa Milkevich. Ned Hacker is on the end down there. Jared Hall and Zach Smallwood from staff will be uh, assisting us tonight as well. And so before we get started tonight, I would just like to go over a couple of things uh, about how we, we run the meeting. Um, I will bring up a, uh, an agenda item. Um, the first thing we'll do, we have some general business that we'll take care of without public comment. Once those are taken care of, we do have two conditional use permits tonight, one for Fashion Place Mall, uh, a master sign plan, and another for Smith Family Dental. It is a new dental office building. So those are the two main uh, items that we will be discussing and voting on tonight. Um, so with that, um, I would ask you to silence your cell phones, please, if you do have them. And um, after I introduce uh, the agenda item, we'll have a presentation from staff. Then the applicant can come up and, uh, and add any additional information that they would like. Uh, we will take public comment after that and then it comes back up to us if if you want to make public comment i just ask that you wait until you're recognized by the chair and then you come up to the podium state your name address uh, very clearly for the record everything is recorded tonight we are on uh, uh i don't know what do you call it is it closed circuit it's just live feed live streaming. Live, live streaming on on the internet tonight as well all meetings are so with that i think that's that's enough to try and digest right now so we'll We'll get started and uh, move to the approval of minutes. Has everyone had a chance to? We don't have any tonight. That's right. See, um, I'm not sure why, but we'll we'll move to number two. Conflict of interest. Do any of the uh, commission members have a conflict of interest with any item on the agenda tonight? No. 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 Okay. Item number three: approval of findings of fact. We have one finding of fact. And that is for the Dwayne Jess Accessory Dwelling Unit. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review that? Yes. yes. Any questions, concerns, or comments? No. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the finding of fact for the conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit on the property owned by Dwayne Jess, as stated in the uh, findings. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. I have a motion by Sue Wilson, a second by Scott Woodbury to approve. The findings of fact for the Dwayne Jess Accessory Dwelling Unit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. That passes unanimously. All right. With that, we will move to item number four on the agenda, Fashion Place Mall Master Sign Plan. And, Jared, you'll be presenting this to us tonight. All right. For interest's sake, I wanted to be clear about the, the nature of the application. This is new signage for the project at the Fashion Place Mall. Under the new sign code that was adopted, uh, I wanted to say late last year, right, or mid-year last year. We did allow um, some, some different signs to be branded on different properties. The Fashion Place Mall is made up of a whole bunch of different properties. Are we recording? Um, but the signage, for purposes of the signage, we're considering on one property. We're allowing them to be branded together. <coughs> Signs. That's the, the short version of why we had to make that change in the sign code last year. Um, Is his microphone so on? It doesn't that, that sound like it. We're talking about many, many properties Just have Zach double check. Small, but all of them are part of the Fashion Place Mall sign. Just have Zach double check. Um, under that new sign code, project signs can be allowed in, in this CD zone by the planning commission for uh, different sizes of, of projects. The Fashion Place Mall is greater than 20 acres. Um, as you know, so it falls into that category. That allows it a couple of different things that aren't allowed on, on some other properties. Two of those, or one of those things is the, um, uh, I'll try not to. We have no way. One of those things is, a, is what we call a pedestal sign, a large sign for a project that has multiple tenants listed on the, on the sign that gets a little more height and a little more area than most signs are allowed, and because this site is over 20 acres, it's allowed two of them. So in this sign package that's been proposed, um, there are 
two pedestal signs. Uh, there are six monument signs throughout the project that are branded for Fashion Place as well, and then have different um, anchor tenants branding on them as well. And then there are 11 vehicular direction signs. Um, just to, uh, to, to be clear about one other thing as well, the pedestal signs, all of the sign package needs a plan <coughs> to review approval under that code. But the pedestal sign and the EMC sign in the electronic message center, a changeable copy portion of that sign requires conditional use permit approval. So that's what we're going to do with you. Jared, does, does your pointer work tonight? Do you have, could you just for the benefit of everybody, show where the, the pedestal signs yes. will be, the, yes. the two pedestal That's ones? Great, a great idea. So right here on State Street, right kind of the main entrance to the mall that you're heading in is the one of the pedestal signs, and then on Winchester Street, another entrance is the other pedestal sign. Okay. So kind of the two main frontages that fashion place. Thank you. Um, and then again, you can see actually the monument signs as well. This, this mapping kind of shows you what they call right. the freestanding signs. So monument signs are other kind of key points to keep people oriented while they're on site. And then this is to show what that uh, pedestal sign looks like. And this is kind of a common theme throughout the, the signs. They're supposed to be tied together with different themes. Uh, as you have in that <coughs> package that's in front of you too, uh, the drop signs to, to make it clear. This outside portion is lighted and can change color as well. Okay. So you have some of the anchor tenants shown there and the fashion place branding. These are the pedestal signs. Both of them are the same. Um, that's the kind of a depiction of where they will be in their positions. So you can see that first one uh, on Winchester and then the other down on State Street. It's honestly surprising that they don't already have. These are the monument signs. Again, it's the same kind of theme, same kind of look. And these different places where they're going to be located throughout the project. Uh, Taco Bell, the corner's no longer there, that's where the Shake Shack's going on now. Chuck around at the other corner, and then Dillard's. Again, monument signs, these are the other few placings. And then as we mentioned, there are vehicular direction signs throughout. In projects, the <coughs> directional signs and the structural signs, like we allow all over the place in CD zoning that say, drive through this way, et cetera, those are always allowed. Directional vehicular directional signs are larger than that. They're allowed to be larger than that. These larger projects, seven acres and 20 acres now. Uh, that's the depiction there. This, these do meet the code that we allow for sign area and overall height. They have to be placed in certain ways so that they don't cause um, visibility problems. We check them off for that. Everything looks good. And those are the locations there. And we do have some other, um, there's some other things that, that are part of the package that don't require any specific approval. Entry letters and things like that. Also, in the package. Exactly what it is. Looks nice. And a small one in the center right there at that entrance. We are recommending that the planning commission approve the overall package for signs, fashion place, and the condition of the pedestal and EMC signs uh, with these six conditions. And these, these apply um, to all the EMCs that we do in the city, but specifically here as well. There are dimming requirements for after dark, and we want to make sure that these abide by all those rules as well. Um, the representatives are here tonight. I know that Jim was working with them very closely over the last in a while. So making sure that they understand all the all the different components and the different products we can see, so they're very well versed in it. No doubt they'll have a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, any questions for staff? Okay. Thank you, Jared. Um, if the applicant would like to come up and add any additional information, uh, we'd love to have you come up to the podium. Have have you? Oh, I need to have you state your name and, and address for. And I'm here from Philadelphia uh, to present this. First, okay. I want to say what a pleasure it's been dealing with Jared. Jim McDulty and Susan Nixon. I've done hundreds of these types of uh, meetings and presentations, and they stick out as one of the few that's made my life easier. <laughs> Very nice. And like I said, we've been working on two and a half years and worked along with Jim to make sure that certain things were in the code and that we complied completely with the code. Very good. That's it. All right. You have had a chance to review the, the six conditions that are attached to it. 
and you you can comply with those. Okay, that's, that's the main thing we need for tonight. Any any questions or comments from the commission for the applicant? I have, a, I have a question, but I think it's for staff. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, and it's just curiosity. Um, there's dimming requirements on the EMC signs. Does that apply to the is the lighting around it? It's specifically for EM. The language is specifically for EMCs for changeable copy, so it wouldn't necessarily apply to the lighting around the signs. Huh. Interesting. I'm not sure what to say about that. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Thank you. We'll. Uh, We'll, we'll have some public comment, hopefully, and then uh, if need be, we'll bring you back up to answer questions. Thank you. All right, with that, um, I would like to open this agenda item for public comment. We encourage anybody that's here to uh, uh, speak about this item to please come forward and state your name and address for the record. And um, you have up to three minutes to talk about anything you would like pertaining to this particular agenda item. Okay, seeing none, I will close the public comment period and uh, bring it back up here for any additional questions, comments, uh, or I'm open for a, uh, a motion as well. Jared, as, as a follow-up to Lisa's question, um, was that considered, that the, the lighting and around the sign in when the sign ordinance was or maybe is that I, I honestly didn't think about it when we reviewed the sign ordinance because i i'm not that creative i guess in signage and well, didn't know that that was a possibility but or maybe it doesn't need to be part of the dimming regulations of the emc because it's considered in the lighting it's, standards it's part of the lighting standards okay anymore. so it's it's the right. same it's the same deal as if I guess I don't have a microphone, so this Well, you're loud enough. You're fine. They're going pretty loud, Scott. They yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so the EMC part, and then my finger doesn't work either. The part that has to be controlled or provided right. by that EMC, the right. new requirements of it was this middle chain. Yes. Uh, right. But the lighting on the outside is the same as any kind of lighted sign. Okay. So it doesn't get to exceed those kind of right. lights that we okay. have already, but it doesn't have to get dimmed after a certain time. Okay. Yeah, as long as it is subject to, to something and they can't make it strobe and, you know, disco and, and those type of things. So although it may be cool, but it, we want to make sure that it's okay. Well, they don't want that to distract from the messaging of the sign. True. So uh, true. And, and why we're worried about the lighting requirements is for the residents within 350 feet or right, and aren't traffic many. safety, right? So, But there, there really aren't anywhere yeah. these two pedestals will Where be. Where those are on Winchester and State, State Street, Street there. Winchester, so there aren't any residents within a long ways. The closest residential structure is about 385 feet away on across, and it's across State Street. Yeah. So it's got a lot of other... Yep. Sign problems to deal with. The <laughs> <laughs> on the east side, they're about a thousand or over 1,400 feet away. Right? Yep. Right. Yep. They're a ways away. Yep. Yeah. So I have to say, I was. I didn't mean to stump you with my question, and when I did, I thought, oh, I'll just carry on the discussion later instead of stump us in public. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the Planning Commission approve the plan center signs for the Fashion Place Mall, including a conditional use permit that allows the installation and operation of electronic message centers on the property at 6191 South State Street, Fashion Place Mall, subject to the six conditions. I'll second that motion. Yes, sir. All right, I have a motion by Marin Patterson and a second by Lisa Mokevich to um, to have the Planning Commission approve the plan center signs for, okay, to approve the plan center signs for the Fashion Place Mall, including conditional use permits to allow the installation and operation of electronic message centers on the property at 6191 South State Street, Fashion Place Mall, subject to conditions one through six. Please call for a vote. Ms. Patterson. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hacker. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Ney. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for uh, bringing the project to us this evening, and we'll look forward to the installation of this. I'm I'm very impressed with uh, everything that was presented to us in the packet tonight. I really like the fonts that they're using on this as well. They're very, Great. very pleasant. Yeah. So very nice. Thanks. Thanks. It's nice to see our mall continue to thrive. 
one of the few. Yeah. All right. With that, we will move to the next agenda item, and that is Smith Family Dental, and Jared will be presenting this also. And this is at 152 West Winchester Street. It's a new dental office building. Jared? Thank you. Um, as you said, this is a new dental, uh, new dental office building. Um, Morgan Smith is the applicant. Smith Family Dental would like to build this uh, for their for their business location, 152 West Winchester. Uh, it is in the R&B zone. It's one of the last pieces that's in that zone, um, going down the south or the north side of Winchester. You can see in the uh, aerial photograph here. This is the back side of the park and ride lot uh, at the track station. Uh, you have some other mixed uses in the area. These are the apartments, sorry, I keep saying apartments, but I mean the office condo. Winchester to the east and Winchester Street, obviously. Um, this property is cleared and is ready for development now. There were a lot of trees on the property before, so it looks significantly different um, at this moment than it did previously. But as you can see, it is in that R&B zone. Um, we do have certain requirements for commercial buildings in the R&B zone. The Smiths have been working with us for a while on this to, to get the project ready. Um, and we think we're, we think we're ready to, to present the planning for this. So it is about a, it's just over 4,800 square feet, 4,500 square feet, so not a huge office. This is the property you can see it uh, if you before they go on the tree. And actually, see the sound wall of the three, you didn't know it was there. That is the I-15 corridor. Again, those uh, office condos. Um, looking, looking across Winchester Street. So it's not, a, it's not a large piece. It is about 0.59 acres. I think I overstated the acreage in the, uh, in the staff report there. It's about 0.59 acres. Um, you have the property laid out this way. The building is toward the street, which is what we like in the R&B zone. Although we typically do that for a couple of reasons. One is just to create a more residential feel without parking in front of the building, but also to keep it further from the, the residential that it's usually buffering. In the case of Smith Family Dental's building here, the, the freeway is, is behind them. So the comfort and satisfaction of the motorists is what we're after. With. <laughs> we like the building out the front, even though there's not residential back there to buffer, just because it creates a more residential feel as you go past it. And we can look at pictures in just a second. Um, I want to stay on the site then for just one moment to, to point out a couple of things about parking. Um, we mentioned this, I think, in the, in the planner meeting we had with the Smiths. Um, there is a parking stall here, some ADA compliant. It does have to be van accessible, and it's going to push everything over and probably drop one parking space mm -hmm. from the plan. However, they're proposing 25 parking spaces. We would require 19 to 20 under our regulations, so we feel like they'll still be adequately parked. Um, they do have a, a neighborhood, they're close to a large neighborhood, and I'm assuming some of the clients who come from that neighborhood are the established business, so you can probably bring them on the clientele with them. Um, but still, we'd like there to be a, a stronger connection to the neighborhood and keep it with r &B as well. The main entrance to the building uh, is, is back here along the parking, which makes perfect sense. Um, we would like to see that sidewalk, though, extend from the entrance to here that's not really a it's not really intended for a primary entrance for, for public use. Like that sidewalk extended through the landscaping and back to this part so that those that are on the sidewalk out front can get there more easily. The one other thing to note that's in your staff reports is this entrance, this access drive running past the building is 20 feet wide, which is what we look for for emergency services and for appropriate access. But at the street, it needs to be 25 feet wide um, for at least a car length and then it can neck back down to the 20. Be all right. So we want to see that adjustment. Uh, there's room enough to work with that uh, that uh, opening on on Winchester. So the site's not overused or too tight. So we should be able to accommodate it easily. There is a garage building at the rear of the property uh, for storage and for uh, equipment to get used for the landscaping and maintenance of the parking lot and and the occasional I don't know 65 Thunderbird or something. I don't it's a large garage building back in the back. It matches the home. I'm sorry, it matches the the dental office itself in terms of look and material. Uh, again, keeping with the the feel for the R and B, trying to keep things looking residential or compatible with residential at least. Um, and there's a small dumpster enclosure next door to that. Uh, the parking layout is good, as we said. The landscaping plans, we, we did put in your staff reports, the requirements for landscaping, it does meet and exceed those for the um, really section nice. 1768. Uh, there are a couple of existing trees that can be kept, I guess those are back here on the property. Most of the others had to go because of the layout that's needed. Uh, the landscaping plan is here and looks appropriate. Um, that'll get modified just a little bit too with the widening of that access. Uh, but we can accommodate that on either side uh, in some ways. And again, that's, that uh, sidewalk coming down the, 
have here. None of those um, have, none, neither of those two additions need to impact the amount of landscaping in a negative way, so we should be okay uh, in terms of the conditions. Uh, floor plan, there are a lot of chairs, um, so you can have different people at different stages of uh, their procedures. Uh, a couple of dentists, some assistants, and so there's not a lot of employee parking needed either. It's not a giant operation. Um, and then one thing that did confuse us, and I just want to make sure is understood for all of you, this stairway in the back or on the west side is to the crawl space. That gives you access to, it's not a full basement, it's a low basement, gives them access to the mechanical and utilities. Okay. So it's not counted in the square footage that you put in the park. Um, these are the elevations. The building, again, there's a lot of changed pitches, and that's good for us. There's some stone veneer at the bottom, uh, siding. The windows are punch windows with white frames. They look, they look residential. It's, it's a nice looking building. We feel like uh, they did a nice job. Uh, sort of pillared and covered porch on both sides, on both ends rather than north and south ends. And some renderings of that. Really the right looks too. No, no additional signage, no monument sign or anything like that right now. Not proposed here. Okay. We do allow monument signs in the R and B zone. Right. That would take a separate permit. Uh, they don't require planning commission approval necessarily, but they could apply for a permit for a monument sign. We no longer allow um, pole signs in the right. R and B zone, but we would allow a small monument sign. Okay. Um, and that we are recommending approval. So subject to a few conditions. Mostly they have to do with the storm drainage. Uh, we do want to see that widened access and then the, the pedestrian access to mm -hmm. the earth. And then making sure the landscaping, when that modification is done, still complies with the uh, code in 1768. Yeah. Uh, any questions for staff at this point? Okay. okay. Thanks, Jared. All right. Would the applicant please come forward and uh, address us and uh, offer any additional information if you would like. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Morgan Smith, 6, 6 5 South Fashion Boulevard. Uh, Jared presents way better than I did, but uh, thank you for doing that. I can't do what you do, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but yes, no, we uh, looked for last year for different places budget-wise. Uh, we didn't want to get in too expensive, so we looked all over the valley. We wanted to stay in Murray. Uh, we got serious about a couple separate lots outside of Murray. This one, uh, luckily, came with a friend who talked to me and we basically made it work. So uh, I'm really excited about that. We actually ended up doing lot line separations and everything. So this is going to be just ours. Um, you know, Murray's been great. A lot of my close friends are from Murray. But um, so we're really, really excited. A lot of our patients are from Murray and surrounding neighborhoods. Um, yes, all the conditions will definitely work in a way possible. You know, that's how life is. You work things out and make it happen. Um, hopefully, we get a list of this so we, I can't memorize all of that. Yes, I'm, I'm sure staff will take care of that. But yeah, we will definitely comply with all of those um, sidewalk out front, winding. Um, access point. But it's kind of fun to learn all this stuff. You know, roof and all it gets kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't fall asleep, Tony. <laughs> 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 all right. Any any questions from uh, uh, commission members? No. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Okay, with that, I will open this item up for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to comment on this application, I would invite you to come up and do so. Okay, um, I will close the public comment period, seeing no, no action. So with that, I'll bring it back up. And uh, commission members, any, any questions, comments, uh, motions? Uh, the floor is yours. Okay. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that the Planning Commission approve a conditional use permit to allow the construction of a new dental office at the property address 152 West Winchester Street, subject to the conditions outlined. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Ned Hacker and a second by Sue Wilson to approve the conditional use permit to allow the construction of a new dental office at the property addressed 152 West Winchester Street, subject to the 10 conditions uh, listed in the packet. Please call for a vote. Mr. Hacker? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Nay? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Woodbury? Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. 
Thanks for being here tonight. Congratulations, and we're really happy to see you come back and find a place in Murray. Yeah. This process went a lot easier than the last one. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, that, <laughs> that is the final item on our agenda for this evening. Uh, Jared, Zach, any, any additional uh, information we need before we adjourn for the evening? I think we got everything in the pre-meeting with okay. Fashion Place West. Um, open house this week, next week on Wednesday. I, that's okay, well, with that. Motion to adjourn. We Second. are. We're adjourned. <laughs>